smoking good barbecue. This week on the Comedological Radio Report, Imogen goes to Gwar. Frankie McDonald is late because the hurricane, well, has got uh, things kind of messed up over there in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Plus some um, videos from myself, Joey, only the Caribou weather dude on the fire line this summer. That's right. Forest fire videos and more Joey only hitchhikes to town. What a show we got for you. Say hi, Joey only. Hi, hi Joey, Joey only. Um, I'm Frank McDonald. You're listening to Comedian Me, Roger Weather Report with Joey only every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 11 p.m. Atlantic time. Every Thursday night, Comedian Plus Meteorology Caribou weather dude, Joey only that lives in Wales, British Columbia. And Joey Only is a really, really great guy. He does the weather report. And Joey Only is a really, really nice guy. You can follow Joey Only on YouTube. Caribou Weather Dude. Joey Only, he's a really nice guy. He lives in Wells British Columbia. He fights fires and forest fires and things like this. Joey Only is a really nice dude. I'm Frank Down. You're listening to me, me, Roger Weather Report. Caribou Weather Dude. Joey Only. I'm Frank Down. Say hi, Joey Only. Hi, Joey Only. Say hi, Joey Only. Hi, Joey Only. <laughs> Weather it's hot, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we've got. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather, weather or not. There it is. <laughs> good morning, Prince George, and good afternoon, Winnipeg. This is the Comedy Meteorology Report. This is Comedy Meteorology, Comedy I am Joey, only your host here in Wells, British Columbia. Hearing the show on C for 88.7 FM, Prince George, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And, of course, Winnipeg, noon on CKUW 95.9 FM. The show features, as always, the rotating cast of comedologists, our panel of people talking about the weather across Canada and North America. Of course, Frankie McDonald being the star of the show. He's not here yet, which is very rare for him to not be punctual. That could be because he's got a Wi-Fi problem. Who knows? He's usually walking around outside of a A&W or something like that lately. He's been not wanting to do shows in his house. He's been trying to walk around at night. And, of course, we got a long winter coming up. So why wouldn't you be outside as much as you can? I totally get that. So this is your show about comedy and meteorology. And we're going to talk a little bit about the weather from across Canada. And without Frankie here, we always go to the number two man himself, Brandon Houck. Well, last week, Brandon was quite busy Trying to produce a Brooks Band and hockey game at the same time as being a guest on this radio show. So at the same time, he was uh, three radio stations at once he was being broadcast on, although maybe not all at the same time, but, uh, if that makes sense. We have this weird time delay thing. So we're recording the show here on Thursday, the 6th of October, and you're going to hear it in Prince George on the 8th, and you're going to hear it on the 10th in Winnipeg. Ben and Houck. Boom! There goes the dynamite! Old weather has been absolutely gorgeous. I have not worn pants so far this month, so that is a really good thing. And we've had temperatures approaching at least uh, low 20s uh, for the first part of the month. We had a little cool spell today, like mid to high teens, but that was still absolutely gorgeous. Lots of sunshine and giggles. We actually had a little rain this morning as well, so that... Uh, it was also a nice little refresher as a uh, little frontal system went through. However, in the eastern prairies, uh, like Saskatchewan, had the uh, hard frost this morning with uh, hard freeze. And uh, they had temperatures minus 6 to minus 11 to start the morning. So a little bit of a chill in the air there. Arctic high pressure system dropped in from the north. And Winnipeg had their first dusting of snow for the season. So... Take that, Winnipeg. <laughs> it's been extremely warm here. We've, I still have flowers blooming in my front yard right now. For example, uh, totally unheard of here in the mountains. I mean, I'm 4,000 feet above sea level at 53 degrees north. Uh, by this time, usually we've had several snowfalls come through. And generally, nothing's staying. Uh, but uh, Nonetheless, BC has been pretty warm. I mean, the hot spot in Canada at this hour, it's uh, 7 o'clock BC time. It's getting dark. It's still 26 degrees in hope. You know, and then Prince George looking ahead, Saturday, 19 degrees, Sunday, 19 degrees. Monday, they got a chance of showers, but uh, we do see sort of a bounce back up into Wednesday, going back to 16 degrees. So we're, we're seeing really warm weather. Uh, Brian... Uh, regular uh, on the show here has been saying that in Portland they've been up over 30 degrees. So Brandon, what's going on? 
Oh, yes. Uh, so definitely dominant upper ridge uh, that has been uh, kind of a bit of a Rex block that's holding it all in place here. So the eastern half of the country has been cooler than average. Meanwhile, here in the west, we've been dealing with this well above average uh, for the start of fall. And uh, this likely this trend likely will continue. However, we do have a little blip in the system for next week. So the Thanksgiving long weekend coming up here is going to be absolutely gorgeous with those temperatures up in the mid to upper 20s and southern Alberta, especially. And we'll see those 20 degree temperatures continue in B.C. But uh, Monday to Tuesday, we do have a cold front coming through next week. And that will be that little blip in the system here. So that will mean we'll get a few more showers and higher elevations might get some snow shower activity. Uh, confidence of that is quite low at this time but we'll see a brief cool down once again for the first part of next week and then we'll see the bump up in temperature once again so it looks like the trend for out throughout that october here the west stays warm the east staying cooler than average and i believe yeah it's like snowing in timmins ontario right now and uh you're gonna see the uh fairly chilly temperatures uh, persist for quite some time in the eastern half of the country so that will help kind of keep the uh hurricanes away for that matter as well so this is the warmest i have seen at this time of year here in wells british columbia like i've never seen seen it as warm as it was today in october like it's just unbelievably warm uh i'll break from you for one second brandon and just ask imogen and pete have you been experiencing what you would call unusually warm weather He's in Colorado. Pico yes, Pico. actually, uh, I'm wearing long sleeves today, but I really didn't need to. Uh, it was uh, it, it cooled down the other week, and I thought it was uh, the end of uh, sunshine and uh, good weather here. But uh, actually, it's uh, it was like almost like a summerish day today, which was uh, all good, all good. So. Uh, surprising though for this time of the year i thought it would start cooling down more already victoria british columbia imogen yeah no it's uh pretty standard in victoria it's it's pretty warm until the last week of october is when we get a massive temperature drop halloween it's freezing we get a false sense of oh it'll be a nice temperate halloween because the days leading up to it are typically fairly warm i mean it's cooling off but it's still manageable and comfortable, but all of a sudden, like the last few days of October, it's icy, miserable. We're getting light ice on the roads. We get black ice during the days just because like the roads are damp. Everything is damp here. It's a wet island. Basically, I live on a sponge, a rocky, dank sponge of an island. So yeah, Halloween night, all sorts of hilarious accidents, makeup smeared everywhere, lipstick all over the highways. It's really quite a thing of beauty. But you wouldn't characterize then the last number of weeks to be unusually warm for Victoria, at least. No. So in no, the continent, so then we get the mod moderating effect of the coastal weather. Uh, we're, so we're a number of minutes into the show, and we still have no Frankie McDonald, and uh, I'm quite shocked. But uh, what are we going to do? But go on, Brandon Houck, Talk to me about the laundry <laughs> advertisement. <laughs> laundry. <laughs> so the big loads laundromat the brand new uh, laundromat here and it takes credit card and visa cards so it's a very uh, oh yes and they actually will come to your house and pick up your laundry and bring it to their laundromat and do it for you which is also very special too or you can take your laundry in drop it off and then they can bring it back to your house, which is also going to be quite a convenience as well. So I don't think any other laundromat does this. And they also have TVs and you can watch all your favorite sports and everything inside these laundromats. And oh, yes, it's like a very cozy place to be. Absolutely. Big loads laundromat. It's like a one of a kind laundromat. So can you give us the rendition of of the advertisement that you made the uh advertisement okay so i just got to go off screen here for a second because it's saved in my work email not my so, personal email so here we're gonna get brandon Houck, radio personality from 105.7 fm brooks real country radio station we're gonna get brandon Houck in character here in a second doing the the coin the the credit card laundry mat 
advertisement, radio. I'll pick up your laundry and do the big loads for you. That's right. So we do. We do the big loads for you here. So when you need to represent your team or event, do it with Frontiers. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's go back. That's the other one I did. I thought you were a professional. (laughs) Well, sort of. Sort of. I'm pretty good at this stuff. All right. This one. This is the one. Okay. Here we go. Big Loads Laundromat is a proud supporter of the Brooks Bandits. We are gearing up for the hockey season. We have added hockey equipment cycle to our big washing machines. No more stinky hockey jerseys, towels, or equipment. Bring your gear down or call and use a free pickup and delivery service. (laughs) Ask us about... (laughs) This is bad. I can see you all laughing on here. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Let's I try love it. I love it. <laughs> Big loads of laundry, man. <laughs> Smoking good barbecue. All oh, right, that's, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> that's the one you're looking for, isn't it? Yes. All right. Well, we'll come back to you, Brandon. Uh, Brooks Bandits have been doing really good. Winning. <laughs> Excellent. We'll talk to you again in a few minutes. Image of Cookie Bailey down in Victoria, British Columbia. This week she went to see Guar. Good evening, Blues and Ghouls. I just crowd surfed the mosh pit at Guar. It is an absolute bloodbath in there. This is a thing of beauty. I'll be sitting here watching video clips all throughout the show. No, no, I'm good. One does not go to metal shirt. I'm so well, no bottoms are not getting a lot of attention. Incidentally, good times had by all. Blood, gore, murder, mayhem, as far as the eye can see. Weather is humid, weather inside is frightful. But Guar is always so delightful. I will see you all on the show. Welcome to Helen, children. Just fresh out of Guar over at the Vogue Theater in beautiful, rainy, soggy, sunny Vancouver. It was an absolute bloodbath. We have nothing but clear skies right now. And I am soaked in gore just like everyone else. I am a human sponge. It was wet, it was dank, it was disgusting, it was murder mayhem. And it was so much fun. Anyhow, clear skies as far as the eye can see. I don't know where the hell I'm going, but I'm pretty sure a lot of places aren't going to let us in like this. See y'all on the show. Smoking good barbecue. If you don't know who Gwar is, they're a legendary metal band who uh, they like to dress up in costumes, spray the entire audience with blood, play really wicked metal bands. Uh, Dave Brocky, the original singer, he's no longer with us, but the band continues on because Gwar isn't just about one man. Mm-hmm. It's about something else. I don't know what it is. It's awesome, though, whatever it is. Imogen, talk to us about the Gwar show that you gave us the live with report from uh well i actually i don't um, i don't even remember what all i sent you for updates because i did a few things over the last few days um the weekend started with doing uh being ringside at the champ promotions round two boxing tournament so i did photos for that and i may have sent you an update from that or just a bunch of stills and some insane texts i'm not sure um, then a couple days after that, there was Guar at the Vogue Theatre in Vancouver, which was incredibly cool. Um, that one, typically at a metal show, the uniform... <gasps> Frankie's here! Hi, guys. Well, we got to stay focused, Frankie. because then our timing would have been just bang on for Frankie. Hi, Frankie. Hi, Mitch. And he's gone. Okay, so back to the Vogue Theatre. The- back to the Vogue Theatre. Awesome. Yeah. So typically at a metal show, the uniform of choice is black. Everyone there are surly, misanthropic metal heads wearing black jeans, black t-shirt, black leather coat, long hair in front of their face. So no one has to make on contact with anyone else. 
but it is strangely enough the most friendly crowd you'll ever meet. Mosh pit rules, number one, if a man goes down in the pit, everyone picks him right back up. Injuries are mitigated and it's awesome. Um, at a Guar show, however, ooh, welcome back, Frankie. At Guar, everyone wears white because you will get sprayed with blood, you will get sprayed with semen, you will get sprayed with radioactive slime from any of the characters, giant monster wieners or butts. It's kind of awesome. There's a lot of beheadings. It's just mayhem. It is fantastic. So unlike the typical metal crowd wearing all black, this one's all in white, or in my case, psychedelic hot pink bell bottoms, because that just seems to be the thing to do. Um, crowd surf five times across the pit, which was also extra cool because, well, I could. It was a good pit to surf over, so I did that. Um, yeah, there was a lot of blood. Man, oh man. The theater put down uh, Ramborden carpets to be able to soak up the blood so it didn't actually destroy their floors. They're not set up for that amount of liquid, but with the Guar show, that's what you do. You put layers of sponge and padding. So at the end there, all the staff were just rolling up these wet, dripping carpets. Oh, it was delightful. So good. Then a couple days later, I was hiking around up behind Crystal Falls up in uh, Coquitlam. Did a, did a photo shoot up there. Um, that was a lot of fun. At some point, my photographer, he's picking up some of the mess that, you know, while I'm trying to get my body temp up. Uh, hypothermia set in. I'm in freezing cold water. So I'm shivering and trying to maneuver my socks just to get some warmth going. And he comes running over going, are you okay? I'm thinking he's talking about the cold. No, he had encountered a naked dude carrying nothing, just a naked man roaming the forest with no shoes, nothing. Just out there, naked as the day he was born. I assume he was on something because a really good forest to get high and run around naked up apparently. So, yeah. So there's a little That sounds awful. There. Just the thought of it, even. You know what? You spend a lot of time on stage. You spend a lot of time doing theatrical stuff, and, like, nudity is really neither here nor there. It's more of the novelty of someone that far in the woods with, like, no shoes and, like, not carrying anything. No water bottle. We've got a full, you know... Gear. We've got all of our gear. We've got our, you know, like our camera gear. We've got the wardrobe stuff. We've got all of our bags for all the wet stuff. We've got kerosene. We've got <laughs> all sorts of good stuff going on. And here's a guy who doesn't even have shoes. That is not a comfortable hike with no shoes. But there he is, happy as anything. Good I've times. walked around those shoes lots, but uh, yeah, I haven't, haven't walked, haven't encountered a lot of uh, naked men in the forest here, at least. That's, thank you. God. Frankie's trying to get back in. And I imagine what's going on. I mean, they just had a hurricane there and yep. they haven't had power for in a lot of Nova Scotia. Parts of PEI still don't. Frankie, the weatherman. Frankie, the weatherman. Who? Frankie. Who? Frankie. Ladies and gentlemen. Hi guys, I made it. I'm doing good so far. I had installed intensive updates this week. Microsoft just issued an update to every single computer on the, in the world. Okay. And then I'm trying to get used to getting on desktop computer again after intensive power outage last week in my area for Hurricane Fiona that hit Sydney, Nova Scotia. It was mighty bad. Mighty, mighty bad. We're good to see you back, Frankie. It's really, my desktop computer wasn't on for a week because Fiona just hit Sydney. You Good to see your people. house is standing. Good to see that that all your papers are still standing in the stack. Nothing's been knocked over. Your walls look dry. Your power's on. Your internet's working fine. Talk to us about the last week since the hurricane happened. That means that I had no power. I had to get the generators going and things like this. It was mighty bad. Did you order Chinese food? I did. It's confirmed tray cables working and football season is on. What about the rest of Sydney, Nova Scotia? What's it been like since the hurricane They're gradually happened? restoring power still. They've still got a lot of power trucks and fixing telephone poles and some individuals got no power out there because Hurricane Fiona just hit Sydney, Nova Scotia back on September 24th. A lot of people lost power, food and things like this. Did the kids miss school, Frankie? A lot of kids missed school for a week last week. They went back to school this Monday past. Wow. Hurricane hits, and they only miss a week of school. So that's pretty good, Sydney, Nova Scotia. You're doing pretty There's good. There's a lot of warm weather going on in British Columbia, triggering more fires. And, Frankie, talk to us about the weather in Sydney right now. And then right now, it was raining outside earlier. It's just showers in my area right now. 
They got a major cold front heading all the way down to southeast United States this weekend. Brandon was saying that it's going to be it's snowing in Ontario. Yes, and some warm summer-like temperatures out west, including Wells, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and California, all across Arizona, and places like this. The California is turning colder than average temperatures on the day after Columbus Day. Talk to us about uh, hurricanes, Frankie. Is there more hurricanes coming? Here comes a story of the hurricane. Ian just hit somewhere in the States, in Tampa, Florida. It was really, really bad in Florida. Julia is possible. The next name storm is Julia. It's headed towards the tropical, 13, tropical Depression 13. It's headed to, to be, it's expected to become Tropical Storm Julia. It's going to head towards Niagara, just north of Costa Rica, south of Honduras, as a hurricane. All right. What about Europe this week, Frankie? In lots of windy conditions in the United Kingdom, Scotland, and Ireland. It's going to bring cold weather in Norway with snow and things like this. It's going to bring hot weather in the cooler weather in France. It's going to bring some cooler weather in Spain, Portugal, and all around Egypt. It's Egypt, Africa is going to get really, really hot still. In, in the places like Japan, they're getting lots of rain in Tokyo, Japan lately. It's going to get more rain in Tokyo and all the way up to northern Japan. And China's, India's rainy season came to an end. And so is China's. That means in South Korea, North Korea, even Flavyostok, Russia's colder than average temperatures. Right now, Yaktusk, Russia's getting really, really, really cold. So is Northern Russia. And Magadan, Russia's getting really cold. Saraf, Russia is still pretty warm. Saraf, Russia, where Korea backing off is. And there's, there's a possible, uh, down in Australia, New Zealand, it had snow in New Zealand this week. It's then it has snow in New Zealand this week. It's getting them warm temperatures, cold temperatures, fighting each other. In New Zealand and Australia, it's getting lots of rain and hail and things like this. In southeastern Australia, they're in the hail season right now. Large hail, things like this, breaking windows down Antarctica. It's going to be daylight 24 hours a day before you know it. With the weird hail storms coming and all the weird weather, is there a chance of frozen sharks making their way into the mix? Can we get frozen sharks dropping out of the sky? That could smash the sharks. It would smash the sharks like the hail would, or the sharks would smash when they hit the ground because they're frozen and they're falling from a high enough altitude. They shatter. Frozen sharks would shatter. They would. Did you hear about that? British Columbia will be getting an atm atmosphere season soon. It's going to bring, I get a feeling, it's going to be really, 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 really bad, rainy and snowy in Vancouver, British Columbia this winter coming because it was so dry in British Columbia. Last month and this month, it's going to bring so much rain in Vancouver. Next month into December, it's going to bring a whole lot of rain because that atmospheric river, that's going to wash highways again. Well, and that's the way it really works because if you have the jet stream shape basically the way it does right now, you seem to be benefiting from all kinds of warm weather coming up from the southwest. But what happens as soon as the, that, the ocean turns angry is that uh, means we're on the ocean side of the jet stream in British Columbia. So it means that uh, precipitation will be the thing warmer than average weather, but heavier than average uh, precipitation. So that would be my guess if people were to guess, ask me what my guess is for this coming winter. It's like, well, we're having a, a late onset to winter, but when it does come, it will be a rainy, uh, which is great. I don't want to be on the uh, south side. I, I want to be on that side of the jet stream. I don't want to be on the Arctic side of it this winter. Uh, I don't even have wood in. Uh, my truck's not ready. I don't have money right now. I'm waiting for EI. Uh, yeah, Joel totally. Joel Stover's in the bear season. Polar bear season. So if you ever want to go up to Churchill, Manitoba and see polar bears, Joe Stover, a regular on our show here, who also produces radio at, uh, in Winnipeg, he's the guy who might be driving you out there on that big polar bear bus that the polar bears can't get you and it, it's like a bus that that drives through polar bears. And I got, um, and, and did you hear about that? I got something else to say. I have experience. River season is going to be really, really, really bad in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's going to bring way so much rain next month in December, greater Vancouver, Canada. And, and uh, did you hear about that? Trey Campbell's really busy as well. He's working as well. And did you hear about that? Oh, we heard about it now. That's for sure. So with, with the uh, polar bears, in uh, Joe's yard, what's the possibility of like strapping them all together to pull a sled? Like, would Santa Claus be able to reasonably use polar bears in lieu of reindeer, or is that just not an option? Are they not trainable? 
Well, I think, you know, some animals like say the zebra cannot be broken. They cannot be trained. They're just too wild. I would think that uh, a polar bear's uh, desire to kill you and eat you would make it pretty much untrainable. Yeah. So don't, don't train polar bears because it won't work. That's why there's no polar bear training. And, and, and I no got something else to say. I got my new version of COVID-19 vaccine today at 2.30 p.m. They call it Moderna bivalent COVID-19 vaccine. It's both original strain and Omicron strains. How does it feel? Great. I got a sore arm for that because, of, it's good because the vaccine's working. Pete. Galenko in Colorado always has questions for Frankie, and he will be the next person we're going to focus on. So what do you got for Frankie questions this week, Pete Galenko? Frankie, you mentioned the weather in Russia a little bit, how absurdly cold it gets there, and I'd imagine that would be sort of unpleasant to be that cold. So do you think that Russia's intentions might just be that they want some of that Mediterranean coast because their country is just too damn cold. It's extreme cold in Russia. It's mighty cold in Russia right now. A lot of people in Siberia, they're used to that kind of cold. Like Bola Boskarov, he's used to that kind of cold. Yeah. I, I just don't imagine any other reason to want to be fighting a war when it's so damn cold. I want to stay inside next to the fire and have a drink. What about not- Michael Senikov? I talked to him the other day, and uh, his uh, father's home got uh, ransacked, sort of, and, like, uh, just, uh, it didn't sound like any good news. He didn't really have any good news to tell me about the situation there, and uh, honestly, I couldn't make sense of a lot of uh, what's going on, um, but I talked to him. He's, he's, he's doing all right. He's okay. Though I can't imagine that a lot of people there are uh, like it must be traumatizing to live through a lot of the events that have occurred there. To be honest with you, smoking good barbecue. Here's some clips now of my fire crew this summer working in the BC wilderness fighting forest fires. If you want to see more of that, you can go to Joey Only Care Be Weather Dude, where you can also find more of this show on YouTube. So right now I'm hiking way up here. My guys are all the way down there. Black lining in, they're pushing 30 feet in to the burn. And I'm going and rechecking spots. We've worked yesterday and finding new pop-ups. The thing about the kind of ground we're in is it's very rooty and has lots of rotten logs in the soil and lots of rotten stuff and lots of willow and alder too. It really smolders and simmers and yeah, you just gotta recheck areas like this one. Find the zombie fires before they become zombies here. We've been on this fire two days. Lightning struck just up the hill from me here a week ago or so. 16 hectares and it's, uh, I think we're under control and uh, we're about to declare it uh, contained to or whatever, so. Yeah. Look what we found. <coughs> it's gonna go on this tree. Pretty close to the water line if we needed it. Saved another tree. Spot fire and it's all in the down logs. Lots of this creeping around in here. And we are killing them all. You burned your last burn. Using the small hose, because it was easier to drag it up here. Sometimes that's how it is. I'd rather be hitting it with the heavy hose, but seems more standing around, I guess, for a few minutes here. What happened to all this burning hillside that, well, we happened to that burning side. Just a few smokes and that's tomorrow's problem. What a great day, what a great crew. 
everything's just lovely. Oh uh, yeah, it is. Do you see it? I got mine. Thank you very much. There goes our pump. Oh, she got it just in time. Yeah. Help. <laughs> I got my Bifella COVID-19 vaccine, Omicron vaccine today. Nice. You don't have uh, adverse reactions from it? Just a sore arm. A sore arm, you don't feel like, you don't feel it didn't give you weird brain fog or anything no all right good that's good to know because i had some odd but i'm i'm not a normal person i get odd <laughs> reactions to all sorts of stuff so <laughs> I think well, I mean, the number of people who've had adverse reactions is pretty tremendous so it's not really you can't really say that you're not a normal person because you did it's a lot of people didn't a lot of people didn't I, I've driven a lot of people to lift, including nurses who are just like, yeah, some of my patients are intolerant, uh, like their body physiologically is intolerant to uh, the vaccines is what I've heard from different people. So they're learning more as the stuff progresses. but it sounds like I haven't been following the news much. It sounds like the cases are down, though. You are listening to the Comedological Report on C for 88.7 FM and CKUW 95.9 FM. This is the second half of the show. I am your host, Joey Only. We're going to go talk now to Pete Galenko in, down in Boulder, Colorado. Pete, you've been saying the weather is uh, fairly nice. And, uh, I mean, it's high elevation town you're in there. So uh, you do get uh, winterish weather in Boulder, Colorado. And you've been driving for, now I keep calling it uh, Uber, but I guess it's actually a different thing. It's Lyft, you've been telling me. So I'm going to call it Lyft and uh, stop being a hillbilly. I've never been in an Uber or a Lyft, or I've, I've only been in a few taxis in the last decade. I mean, really, it's uh, just not something that uh, I did hitchhike the other day from Quinnell back to Wells, and that was uh, terribly lame. I wished I had you there at the but you're a little too far away for that pete glanko what's driving for lyft been like this week oh it's been good it's been good uh I, it's honestly a little bit too addicting because i enjoy driving my car so much and uh for the most part the people of colorado have been wonderful so i just like i don't know uh that's something i just uh Though I drove somewhere early, somewhat earlier today, and he said it was a company trip, and it was just over an hour to the airport. And he said his company paid two hundred twenty dollars for the trip, and I got paid sixty one dollars and ninety six cents. I mean, which is not bad for making that in an hour. But I was like, dang, if I got the entire fare from these Lyft rides, I'd be making over a thousand dollars a day easily just driving Lyft, which is something absurd to think about. Uh, I think the lift has treated me very well, but I do see potential for competition there. But I've really enjoyed it, though. This is a really beautiful state to drive in. Oh, I'm getting a spam call now. Uh, it's really like there's all sorts of terrain out here. I drove yesterday through like some, there was like some place that looked like they had real good bass and catfish fishing where there was like some cows grazing and like, I don't know, there's uh, the mountains, there's the city uh i'm from virginia I, I love the ocean i love the like the sandy beach and all that sort of stuff but at the same time it's just like uh this state is a really uh beautiful place to drive so it's it's nice to be able to get paid to do it do you ever find uh looking in your mirror that you catch one of your lift passengers picking their nose i do not pay attention to what my lift passengers are doing i i don't stare i look <laughs> ahead straight at the road and if they want to talk i'll talk uh if they want to listen to music i'll listen to music if they don't want to listen to music i'm very good i could be silent and content 
in my imagination for hours at a time, which makes me a good Lyft driver because I can just I can just drive an hour straight without saying a word, and I don't care. And uh, concerned, I grew up. I grew up in the infra, infra noises infra, in the back. Like I got, I got uh, my imagination uh, entertains me regardless of uh, whether I'm driving someone or not. So. Anyway. So, all right. Have y'all ever had anyone in your car that was like distractingly weird looking, like had a massive goiter or like th- those, uh, like the Hansel twins? I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. This is, uh, it's sort of inappropriate because they were coming from the projects. I'm not sure what type of bug bugs they had or something, but it was at the time when the monkey pox thing was going around. And I was like, God damn it. If y'all got monkey pox, like I didn't say that out loud, but I thought that when I was, they were getting my car, but I was like, that'd be really inappropriate to say, but there was a uh, one passenger that had, some terrible rash with bumps and stuff like that. And I was like, if I get got dang monkey pox, I would not be happy. Uh, though, uh, so I keep my car clean, I saw all that. Uh, they're not all my passengers have been very lovely for the most part. Like, I've got some people that are a little bit cranky drunks, uh, is pretty much the, the worst of it, really, but nothing really serious. Some couples not always a little bit salty, you know, once in a while, but, uh, for the most part, everyone's just really awesome out here to be, to keep it real. Okay, so no, like, giant goiters, no, like, really leg, really or... <laughs> too much attention to people's appearances, but for the most part, I mean, I've had all sorts of really lovely people in every sense of the word. Albinos? Have you had many albinos? Uh, honestly, Good. I can't recall any albinos, which is, I've driven a few thousand people now. I think the odds are that I would drive driven an albino, and I don't think I've driven an albino now that I think about it. <laughs> I just... I just found that they had military and City Nova Scotia is still cleaning up for Hurricane Fiona. Military's there still. How many, Frankie? Have you talked to any of them? Lots of them, lots and lots of them. One of them got in a picture taken with me last week. Anything else you want to tell us about the hurricane? Like, was it scary? It's real scary. It's ultra scary. And uh, they just, signs just came off of the host across the street from me. Have other people said that they found it scary too? Like, compared to other hurricanes you've been through? Matthew, 2016, brought 225 millimeters of rain in one day. Got flooded the area, all some of quite a bit of buildings are torn down. For Hurricane Matthew in 2016, I had 36 hours without power. Hurricane Earl, September 4th, 2010, I had no power for 24 hours. This is probably the worst hurricane then, right? Yeah. Maybe not the rainiest, but the worst. Hurricane Matthew was the rainiest hurricane, and Hurricane Fiona is the worst. So if... if we- if a typhoon is going across the ocean, which is easier for the wind to pick up to hurl across the land? Flying yes, fish the or surface Victoria. spray? Just Ty- like Super Typhoon, typhoon Sanda in 2016 that hit Vancouver. Tree went through the house. Tree went through the window in Vancouver Bridge coming in 2016. Oh, yeah, that's, that stuff happens. We've got a lot of really badly built houses that, like, you know, you can throw, like, you use Kleenex and it'll just, like, whip a hole in the wall. But, I mean, in general, when a typhoon is hurling across the ocean, is it easier to pick up squid that are near the surface or flying fish? And which would go farther on land at the same wind speed? It's like the fish goes on land. Possible sharks. Excellent. I like where we're going with this. Just imagine a storm surge of sharks. I imagine it often. There's a frequency with which I bring this up for that exact reason. I know you do. You are shark obsessed. Sometimes when your truck's broken down, so you got to hitchhike home from town, well, it goes kind of like this. This is my story. Well, I'm leaving my truck at my mechanic's shop, and I'm going to hitchhike to Wells now. Done a lot of hitchhiking in my life. Can't say uh, I love it. It's always a go-to rather than try to organize a ride and get everyone else around me. Like, can you give me a ride at this time or that time? Just go to the highway. You know what? Someone from Wells will come by soon enough. I'm never waiting long on the Barkerville Highway. I probably just jinx myself. Hey, you tail waggers. Yeah, you're tough wagging your tails. Eight percent. That's about my chance of getting a ride. I think. Eight percent. The dream always is to have some babe pick you up. He's like, I've never been to Wells. What's that like? 
But now it's never happened, all the hitchhiking I've done in my life. That's never really happened. Mostly older ladies who are like, who are like, uh, you wanna smoke? And stuff like that. No, no, never much for beautiful women picking me up. Um, did get picked up by some gay guys who are real nice, polite. And I suppose uh, they're pretty sexy guys, I guess, if, you know, if I was into sexy gay guys and stuff, which I wasn't, and uh, they were very nice about it. At least dudes gave me a ride. Well, I did get a ride to the Cottonwood River with this lady who was a little bit older, and she offered me a cigarette, and uh, she'd never heard of Joey only talking about myself in the third person just to see no that was just pure kindness is why she picked me up pure kindness here's the trees that block the sign that says cottonwood house historic site they call it that because it's on the cottonwood river and it was a house nope and they call it historic because it's the past. It's over, man. Historic house. So that's Cottonwood House over there. That's, they got old stuff there. And no one's picking me up because there's no traffic on the highway. I haven't had someone come by in a long time. Could be a long walk tonight. It's getting darker. I'm still out here hating humanity. Well, look at that. Josh Todd or Thanks, Josh. It also thanks. I'm waiting. Wait. Thought I was gonna be walking all night, Josh. Oh, sorry. And then you came along and saved the day. The end. And did you hear about that? I got something else to say. My bottle head you can choose. Red, yellow, orange, purple, and green colors. On the actual bottle, it's all things you could choose. Five different colors since the blue one sold out. It's been a long time blue since one sold you out. Which blue one, Frankie? This one or this one? No, I'm all here. I suggest everyone get all the Frankie merch for good luck. God Frankie, will smile upon you. It's been a long time since you've played the bobblehead for us. Do you have the bobblehead nearby? Can you play the us what must the bobblehead died. says? Put it up to the microphone and, and play the what it says. must have died. Oh Here. no. Hurricane has put out power to the bobbleheads. That's the one about the guy who's trying to eat 50 hot dogs at once. Can't really Trailer hear. Trailer Park no. boys filmed their scenes in Bible Hill, Nova Scotia. Oh, really? I was just thinking about the Trailer Park World Boys earlier. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking about Randy and how the cheeseburgers. And not wearing a shirt, blah, 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 this and that. Like yeah. Randy, he th he likes cheeseburgers on Trailer Park Boys. Then yeah, I was, I was talking to him on Zoom last December. How many views of the uh, TikTok video Trailer Park Boys made have you get? A lot. Millions? Yeah. Frankie, do you ever make your yeah. own cheeseburgers at home? I made my own hamburgers at home, too. You put tomatoes on them? Bacon. <laughs> Like a Bible Hill. Yes, Brandon, that's a cue. Oh, I'm hungry now. I want to bet. Trailer Park Boys <laughs> takes Bird. place off Finding Road in Toronto, Nova Scotia. That's where Trailer Park Boys took place. Barbecue. Making good barbecue. Yeah. Y'all froze. That's why Trailer Park Boys, their show takes place in Bible Hill. Yes, that's. <laughs> See, I'm always in favor of cannibalism. So if we're going to be barbecuing something, we need some cannibalism. And I know a lot of people have an issue with you, that, but I'm saying much like organ donation, we need to have cannibal donor cards. So that way we do have a willing supply so that it, it kind of bypasses the ethics of it, of the whole, well, no one really gave consent to be eaten. Yes, so they did. What I was trying to say is, uh, so what you're referring to, Imogen, is possibly like, say, uh, barbecuing a dog and then feeding it to some dogs no no barbecuing your obnoxious neighbor 
and feeding it to the other obnoxious neighbor. If there's going to be any human meat, meat eating going on, make sure to char it so you don't get Kulu. Kulu is a disease that you get from cannibalism. And like, if you char the meat properly, less health risks. Is that similar to Kurzfeld Jakob? Is it in the what? same category? I don't know. I'm not familiar with that. I hate this conversation for radio. Brandon Hi. Houck. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just yeah, walk yes. in on? Barbecue. Smoking good barbecue. Okay. Because Brandon back. knows what we're talking about. That's Beautiful. right. That's Let's get back to some sort of a, a, a reasonable discussion <laughs> about cannibal, about barbecue, about about weather, about about weather. See, it is really, it's been really unseasonably, you're saying unseasonably warm. There's perfect barbecuing weather, and I think oh, Brandon yeah. would be delicious on the grill. Just saying. Be, Gingers are good. if They're tender. He's got no meat on him. No. no but I only have 58 pounds on me, so... Good luck with that. <laughs> the marrow. Uh, at least I'm one decent kidney. I got diseases. You don't want to eat me. <laughs> See, this is part of where the, the cannibal donor card comes into play, is that you'd be medically screened for, for edibility. If you've signed off on the organ donor card, it's up to the hospital to vet the meat to say that it is disease-free and can be consumed. We're bypassing the FDA regulations on meat consumption. We already know that they're absolutely horrific. That's we get so much E. coli from stuff that's past FDA inspection. But if the hospital's grading it, they're held to a far higher standard. So cannibal donation cards. So right right there's ahead. only like four organ donors on like voluntary organ donors in China, but that's because inmates. all their organ donors are not voluntary. No, oh, they're inmates. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello, RCMP. Yeah, and, uh, maximum like, two weeks or anything up to an eye. Like a suspected. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think if you'd watch my show right he's now, changing his name to the, Karen. The suspect is wearing polka Apparently, dots. We don't have permits for this discussion. The suspect also has black hair and is, has a drink in her hand. Indeed, okay, I do. I'll, a martini, carrot juice, turmeric. Carrot juice and pre workout. How's your yeah. workout business going? Over ice. Oh, solid, man. I'm I am not eating your products now. I don't put you get your protein them. from anyway, sicko. Animal sources. I'm not saying which animals, but they're animal sourced. I got a little uh, too much hair. Humans are animals too. Yes, they are. Mammals. They're delicious. I, uh, I'm Victoria Road in Whitney Pier area, close to me. They got those telephone poles. Leaning over, they, the, those guys will be there replacing the telephone poles very soon. Before they replace them, is anyone able to climb them? Can you climb them like a little jungle gym? Climb them like little monkeys? Uh, you don't want to get zapped. They're a little, yeah, their parents tell them not you to climb on the telephone poles. Those little kids, their parents or their guardian tell them not to climb those telephone poles. That's right, the advised. Especially teenagers. Why oh, especially yeah. teenagers? I would think little children would be susceptible to far worse injuries. Some of those teenagers can knock the telephone pole over. Their parents tell them not to do that, or their guardian. Good luck telling teenagers what to do, man. <laughs> if anybody can, Frankie can. Frankie they knocked can. it over because they were told not to. Teenagers I'm listen. Sure a lot of teenagers they would rather listen to Frankie McDonald than their parents. That's uh, uh, the truth. Especially the ones in his videos. They always listen to Frankie. It might take him a couple times to get his message through, but those teenagers, they'll listen to him. If he says, Peace. say hi to Joey only, they will say hi to Joey only. Hi, Joey only. Hi, hi Joey, Joey only. I'm Frank and Thelma. You're listening to me, me, Roger, Weather Report, Caribou Weather, do down here. Every Thursday night, say 11 p.m. Lengthy time, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Check it out on Caribou Weather, do Joey only YouTube channel. They watch Joey only show every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 11 p.m. Atlantic time. Check it on YouTube. I'm Frank Down. You're listening. You're listening to Joey only show. Caribou weather, do comedian plus meteorology. Say hi, Joey only. Hi, Joey only. That's how that it works. Facts. <laughs> how many people in a week want to get their picture taken with you, Frankie? How many uh, people in a day? Dino's father, Dino of the Gary and Dino show. Their parents is coming to Sydney, Nova Scotia tomorrow. Are you going to get a picture taken with them? At the Mayfly Mall food court. Nice. Dino's nice. parents. They're going to buy you a burger? 
they're they're coming here on the cruise ship. Ooh. Ah, are they gonna buy you a burger at the mall? Don't know. I think they should buy you a burger. That's what I do. Especially A and W burger, a team burger. What do you like on your burgers, Frankie? Mustard, cheese, and bacon. And if you want to make it really special, you take Chinese food, like sweet and sour pork, and smash that into a burger patty, and then you make a burger out of that. Oh, yeah. Put some Kentucky Fried Chicken in there, too? Yeah. What, are we what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's food court mayhem, Brandon. Mayhem. That's why you want to eat me. Because I like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because it's smoking good barbecue. Does it count as barbecue? It's deep fried. There's no grill anywhere near there. Well, they got grilled chicken there nowadays, too. See, I was going to say, I don't think they even grill their coleslaw, but, like, I mean, they deep fry everything, so, you know. Yeah. They changed the oil they used over the years to make it less saturated fat, though, which I think is not as tasty as it once was. Yeah, made some changes there. But that's why you go on down to Montana's for that smoking good barbecue. Smoking good barbecue. Every hour of the day tomorrow on the radio, by the way. So, actually, tomorrow's the last day. This, is, this whole program ends on the 10th, so... So it's, it's like a contest. So if the if the audience hears Brandon uh, say "smoking good barbecue," "smoking good barbecue," then they have to scream real loud. That's right. Scre yell it in the street. That's right. So I can hear it, of course. <laughs> so everybody in the whole city can hear themselves yell "smoking good barbecue." Do you feel That's like you've You've uh, lost some of your, you know, artistic, you know, your creative, your, are you just selling out to Montana's, Brandon? Uh, well, I want some, I got some free ribs out of it, so I ain't complaining. Free I guess ribs. I'd say anything for free ribs right now. Oh. <laughs> what, about, what about the coin laundry? Oh, the coin, well, uh, I'd probably get some free laundry. Of course. You're just, you're just there is yesterday. it your laundry or is it someone else's? Are they just giving you someone else's laundry as payment? This, no one's this, ever really asked I, Joey only to whatever. be in an advertisement before. And it's, you know, they never really said, hey, Joey, your uh, songs belong in a commercial. In fact, most of my songs most certainly didn't even belong on radio. Well, uh. to be fair, they, they just wanted to see your legs in an ad. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I want to see your legs in an ad. I got strong legs. Uh I got hairy legs, yeah. No one wants to see my legs in a hat in an advertisement. Why not? Oh, uh, no, I'm a nice, smooth Dutchman. Smoking good barbecue. Yeah, I'm not allowed to swear on the air. Um, <laughs> Did you hear that over in Russia? They had more sanctions uh, over there. But Russia's getting worse all the time. You're not allowed to talk about the dam. You're not allowed to take pictures of the dam. You're not allowed to speak against the government in Russia. What else? You're not allowed to talk about. You're not allowed to talk of, say bad things about the government over in Russia. You know, there's not enough freedom over there. They can't take pictures of railroads. They can't take pictures of damn government buildings, military bases, and things like this over there in certain churches. And their main food is potatoes. What things? Hey, Pete, what things you're not allowed to do in Russia? You're not allowed to be on the meteorological radio report. I don't know. We might be able to get some Russians on here, though. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff you can't do in Russia. Uh, it is... I don't know. There's a, so I think things are going to change uh, pretty soon there in Russia, though. I hope uh, Western powers don't provoke them too much because they're crazy and they're going to get... The winters are harsh there, uh, so they're not going to have mercy for four hours. Uh, so, I don't know. The winters are harsh here. Yeah, they're harsh there too, but... Uh, Average income in Russia and Ukraine is like $300 a month or something like that. People just stop caring at a certain point about Man, uh, that would do for $300 right now. Dear Lord. Well, when uh, it trickle into the show, <laughs> as much always, show. it's a cheerful end. Feel free to support the show. You can donate. You can find me on the Patreon. Help me there. That'd be hey, awesome. Brandon, if you want to watch the video version, 
of this show. This is the 80th episode of the Meteorological Report. All the episodes are on Joey Only Care Be Weather Dude uh, YouTube channel, as well as this uh, radio show. The finalized version will be there, and you can always uh, hear us recording live on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. So feel free to check out Joey Only Care Be Weather Dude radio channel. But uh, hey, also... Frankie McDonald, he's got his own YouTube channel, 280,000 subscribers to it. Frankie, what else? Uh, where else can people find you on the internet? My Twitter is at, my Twitter is at Frankie McD. My Facebook is Frankie McDonald. My Instagram is Frankie McD1984. My TikTok is Frankie McDonald1984. My Clapper is Frankie McDonald1984. My Twitch is Frankie McDonald1984. My Snapchat is Frankie McD1984. And my YouTube channel is Dogs Wolves. And my LinkedIn is Frankie McDonald. In Russia, you cannot listen to C for 88.7 FM. In Russia, you cannot listen to C. You cannot listen to CKUW 95.9 FM. you got a VPN. <laughs> to all of our, our right. listeners in Russia who are breaking the rules to hear us, stick with it, comrades. We're there for you. For our friends yeah. in Sydney, Scotia, cleaning up right now, we just want to say from the Comedological Radio Report, we are cheering you on. We're glad that no one was killed. And uh, rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. Uh, Sydney... Uh, Nova Scotia, PEI, all the people who've been affected in Nova, Newfoundland, we're there for you, in our spirit at least, because, uh, I mean, we're a long ways away, but uh, when we have our own disasters here in BC, you've uh, felt the same for us. So, uh, solidarity across Canada. This is the Comedological Radio Report. You've had uh, Brandon Houck from Brooks, Alberta on with us, and you've had Image Cookie Bailey down in Victoria, British Columbia. You've had Pete Galenko in Boulder, Colorado, and I have been your host, Joey Only. We will see you next week, everybody. Bye for now. My stomach is upset.